Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eaves and a very warm welcome to the Siemens Mobility podcast, Moving Beyond, where our focus today is Norway, digitalization of a countrywide signaling. We'll explore just how the railway of the future is being developed in Norway through complete resignaling and digitalization, also supported by approaches such as parallel testing, with benefits that range from punctuality to efficiency and many more besides. So let's dive straight into our conversation and do exactly that. I'm delighted to be joined by two fantastic guests. Firstly, we have Lars Andresen, who is Chief Executive Officer at Siemens Mobility AS or Norway. Welcome to the show, Lars. Thank you very much, Sally. So um, look forward to the conversation here. So thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you. And also joining us today, we have Sver Kitchen, who is Chief Operating Officer at Bain Nor. Welcome, Sver. Thank you, Sally. Great to be here. Oh, lovely to join us. Thank you. So perhaps we can get to, to start today with a bit of a personal perspective and get to know you both a little bit more. I wonder if you just give us a little introduction to yourself, your roles, your responsibilities and activities, perhaps starting with you first, Lars. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm, uh, as you said, Lars Andresen. I've started in Siemens in uh, 1999 and have been here uh, with signaling business and mobility business since then. So... Actually, before that, I was employed by Balmo Nord, so I um, have a history there as a signaling engineer. So, um, of course, it's a lot going on in, uh, within the mobility business. Um, for sure, I'm looking forward to, to yeah, join the future. It's um, absolutely a lot going on. So. Absolutely dynamic times, that's for sure. I couldn't agree more. And Sver, could you share a little bit more about your role? Indeed, indeed. Um, I joined the Norwegian Rail back in 2011 as a director of technology. Today, I'm the, the vice president of uh, operations and technology, as you would say, the, C, the, the COO and the CTO, yes. so chief operating and chief technology <laughs> officer of, of Bonnenau. And my, um, I should say, my, my, my task is to make sure that we have a safe and punctual railway today and tomorrow. So when we talk today about, um, about the, the digitalization, um, the future is really here now. Fantastic. I love that. I love that joint role. So, so many roles going in that direction, I would say. Really fantastic to hear that. And I've got a little warm up question for you both as well. So we're really establishing here, you know, the well established network that we have here in Norway. So by train, you can travel in a very relaxed way pretty much at any time. So I want to know, have you ever traveled from the south coast to Bodo north of the Arctic Circle? Something I very much would love to do. Perhaps you first there. Indeed I have, indeed I have. I've gone from the south to the north and from the east to the west and it is, uh, it is quite, a, quite a ride. It's not something you do in, in one leg, uh, you actually divide it into several legs, but it is an experience, highly recommended. Fantastic. And Lars, is that something you've experienced? Yes, I have also experienced that. So, of course, it's a long journey, as uh, Svade said. Uh, we have a long country here in Norway. Uh, so I have been on all lines. Actually, my favorite is the, the line between Oslo and Bergen over the high mountains. And uh, it's uh, something that um, you should also try. Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Definitely. One for my list, that's for sure. I look forward to it. Thank you. So perhaps now we'll dive straight into one of our first topic areas. So really getting to know about the railway of the future that's being developed in Norway right now. So Siemens and Benoit are communicating and really kind of sending this message, this story out there right now, that Norway is really an exemplar of a rail network that's being built and truly modernised. So that includes things like digital signalling network, ERTMS. I'd love to know a little bit more and share with the audience what the key characteristics of this key project is, perhaps starting from your perspective, Sver. Yeah, um, we have a country with around 350 stations. And if you look at the structure we have uh, today, uh, it's basically one signaling system in each location. Um, and that gives us um, a real challenge when it comes to the number of different um, uh, solutions. So the ERTMS, our approach to this has been to say that we want to go as far as we possibly can in standardization. And if you want to really to standardize, we want to make sure that we have uh, for one country, we have one interlocking and we have one data center. So it's a massive standardization program with a new technology. Absolutely, that makes perfect sense. And from your perspective, Lars? 
Jag måste säga att this mega project is the beginning of a new area for for Norway's railway. And of course, uh, Bananur will create uh, the railway of the future with one of Norway's largest digitalization projects. That's for sure. So as as you said, Sverre, one country, one interlocking. It will take some time before we have the entire country equipped with this new system. So, and our service contract that ends in 2059. I don't think I will be part of that, but. Um, Also, that will come into force with the first opening of the first line. Fantastic. You never know. You never know. Absolutely. And <laughs> I, want, I wanted to showcase as well an award-winning project already this, isn't it? The European um, Railway Award for 2022. So I wanted to highlight that because I think that's lovely because, A, obviously recognising the innovation that's happening here with this amazing project, but also the fact that the prize money goes to engineers without borders and they do incredible work, you know, in the most vulnerable, exposed places in the world right well. And, you know, I do a lot of work around tech for good, so I love the fact that this project is supporting, you know, activity like that as well which is fantastic to see um and Lars I'd like to come back to you about Siemens role in this project can you explain a little bit more detail about what that involves yeah the um, Siemens mobility will equip the entire Norwegian railway network of 4,200 track kilometers and more than 350 stations with over train guard ITMS level 2 system This in conjunction with our CMIS V interlocking system and the CNET IP based Bayside network communication system. So, the deliverables from Siemens includes, amongst other equipment, for example, approximately 6,000 point operating systems, more than 8,000 Excel counters, and approximately 15,000 balises. So, it's huge. And even more, we have also 450 railroad crossings that will be fully renewed. And the maintenance contract, as you heard, will last for 25 years after our final uh, last uh, line in operation then. So the contract has a total value around 800 million euro and with covers for several years now for the future. So. Fantastic. Some impressive numbers there. Absolutely. And, and Sphere, from your perspective, you know, this is clearly a milestone moment around signaling. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It is a milestone moment, as you say. Um, also in the fact, as we said, that we go for, for this very uh, standardized, centralized operation. So it means that we will have one data center with all the interlockings for the whole country. And uh, that will communicate uh, uh, throughout the whole country with the uh, with the um, with the points and and, and all the equipment. Um, Bonnano and Norway invest around two and a half billion euros in the in this um, in this digitalization program, and it is the largest digitalization program. Um, at least from the Norwegian uh, within the Norwegian government, so it's a it's a huge investment, and it takes the Norwegian rail into the future, and it also gives us the building block for adding predictive maintenance. All of these, uh, should I say, what we expect out of the fourth uh, industrial revolution, and so it's a it's real enabler. Absolutely. That word enablement was going through my head there. It really is this kind of genuine Internet of Things actualized, isn't it? I love that. And I wonder if, if, Lars, you could explain a little bit more detail about how that fully digitalized IP-based system works. Yes, I will try. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, we also cooperate quite well with Alstrom and Thales, who deliver the onboard equipment to all the trains. That is uh, part for, for Alstrom and also the traffic management system that will be delivered from Thales. So important to cooperate well with them and also do a lot of testing together. So all data communication between signaling systems, radio block center and the trains, ETCS computers, takes place via digital GSM radio. The solution is based on the European EOLINK standard Standard interfaces, it's important for Balmano, so we don't make a separate system for Norway, but this will be common use for the whole Europe. So this enables the interlocking system and field elements to communicate via each other via IP, using an optical fiber-based network. 
So this is a real change from the old systems. As a result, the signaling and safety system will, be, will reduce the cable costs. The cables will be less in the new system than in the old legacy systems. So <clears throat> the country's entire interlocking will be reduced to two redundant data centers. So that is, of course, we are going from 350 separate interlockings to actually one redundant one. So, and at the same time, the operational data from IP infrastructure can be used, safe from unauthorized access to en enhance predictive maintenance. We will have data in true time from all objects and things, so that will support the maintenance and give us a lot of possibilities. And of course, it will also allow the customer to make use of highly innovative applications for the public transport of the future. So, in small words, that is what we will deliver. Fantastic. A lot being packed in there. So many different benefits there in, in terms of reducing complexity, increasing efficiency, the standardization. I love that part about predictiveness as well. So it's kind of you know, active intelligence being enabled here. I love that. Fantastic. So I'm imagining a little track now with a train of a timeline to make all this a reality. Sphere, can you tell us a bit more about what the time sign milestones are for all of this to take place? Yeah, the, the milestones, and as you as you correctly point out, for us, of course, it is simply it's standardization and simplification, which is really the key. And by the fact that we move then um, then uh, uh, operations into the train, so we digitalize the trains, uh, we would have significant less objects out in the track. Uh, but that also, of course, means that we have to rebuild around 400 trains. So the the main issue right now is to make sure that we have sufficient trains to open the lines as we have planned and we've had some some issues with with parts uh, so right now uh, there is a there is a there is a there is a struggle in the world in in the world in terms of processors and what have you so there is a bit of uh, unclarity in the in the opening we should have opened on the 31st of october on the northern line we will not be able to do that due to what has happened with the lack of 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 parts so a key milestone for us is to get operational as soon as possible and that means 23 on the on the northern line and, and also make sure that we have Jövik line as uh, as soon as possible and then we have planned Oslo the, the capital for 26 so it means but the, the the key message here is that we may we need to make sure that we move uh, synchronized so we have the trains rebuilt before we are able to open a line Absolutely. And you know, obviously a huge, huge undertaking this. You mentioned um, that supply chain issue affected so many different verticals across the world at the moment. Totally yeah. understandable. What other challenges have you had to consider, you know, particularly from uh, you know, the people factors as well around training, for example? Yeah, we will train around 5,000 people in, 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 in altogether. So it is a major shift for the whole Norwegian rail. It's not only for Bonn and Nord, the railway infrastructure owner. Um, the, the operators need to train the, the, the drivers. Uh, so as I said, we have then built a, a training facility um, just for this purpose. So we spend a lot of time, energy and also money on providing the right training at the right time. Fantastic. I love that. I heard about the Norwegian Railway School, for example, and things like that. So I love the investment that's been put into to skilling and reskilling here. Brilliant stuff. And, and last, from your perspective, what is the biggest challenges from the Siemens view? Yeah, well, sir, absolutely. Installation and commissioning will be you now performed during ongoing operation. So, so it's, of course, uh, we need to keep the legacy system in operation until we switch over to the new system. So that's, of course, um, a challenge. Of course, also we had the weather conditions here in Norway, uh, quite a lot of snow during winter time and temperatures down to minus 20 at least. So we have to do the installation during summertime and that's also uh, quite a challenging uh, thing. So, um, of course, we also see that speed in the processes where several parties has to be involved. This has been an issue both from Bonnenur and uh, the all three suppliers from day one. But um, 
speed in the processes and of course it's step by step uh, approach uh, from Siemens to Bonnenwood and also to further to the government so it's um, it's uh, some challenges within there the global situation related to supply chain is also a challenge so we have some elements within some areas in the project there so Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Lars. And I think that really brings that all to life holistically from those different perspectives. I think at this point, it might be a nice segue to, to move into a different topic area, just expand a little bit more around the complete digitalization of the Norwegian Rail Network. And we're expecting to see multiple benefits here. We've heard a few already that hinted at, for example, around punctuality, um, reduction of maintenance, and reduction of repair, for example, as well. But I'd love to drill into a bit more detail about that. So, Lars, perhaps with you first, what do you see as the core advantages of the project yeah first of all i will mention that um, thanks to the etcs level 2 system uh, bono will be able to eliminate all signals at the main track in the future of course the sources for failures will be dramatically reduced and um, that will give a benefit so um, i must say as a as also one system for the un entire country means also common competence for all maintainers and users of the system so that is also a real good benefit here with this system we also get real-time data from the objects and the systems this will increase the opportunity for maintenance and predictive maintenance actually that we can start to see the failures before they occur so this will be a real benefit and we, we look forward to, to work into that. Fantastic. I love that. You know, benefits both from an operational point of view and obviously for the end user consumer as well, alerting before they might experience an issue, for example. So I love that. And Sven, from your perspective, what do you see as, as a key benefits? Uh, there are several key benefits. Well, let's start with safety. Uh, we will automate some manual stations, uh, so it means that we will uh, be able to increase um, safety on the Norwegian uh, Norwegian Rail. Norwegian Rail al al already has uh, quite a good statistics. We are one of the better in Europe, but we see always the possibility to improve safety, so we will see an improved safety with uh, with the ERTMS. Then, of course, we want to see, um, see an improved uh, punctuality, with the fact that we have reduced complexity on the line. It, means that we have standardized on, 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 on modern equipment, so we should bring down uh, the number of, uh, of, of errors, uh, signaling errors, um, and then give us uh, improved, functional, uh, improved punctuality. And at the end of the day, then, with improved uh, punctuality, we should also see capacity increase. Capacity increase should also come if we go to an ATO, automatic train operation, and what have you. So there are several benefits from starting already today with ERTMS, but also using ERTMS as a building block. Then if I should add to this, of course, being, uh, being uh, responsible for the operations, I would also like to see benefits in, 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 in the cost side by being able to have uh, people standardize the, the, the training on one solution instead of having a number of solutions that we have today. So there are several benefits in, in standardization and simplification of the line. Fantastic. Thank you. And you know, reflecting on what we've talked about so far, I think it's quite clear that you know, the, the scale of innovation that's happening here. So I think the world right now is really looking at Norway as, as kind of a bastion of change in rail. So I'd love to explore more, you know, it's making the assumption that everything here is successful. I think all the indicators are looking so positive. Um, it could really prove to be, say, a blueprint, really, for modernization of many other rail networks across the globe. So just how important do you see this project for the future of railway more broadly? I'm um, Sver, perhaps you first. Yeah, there was a reason why we, we won this uh, Trailblazer Award yes. this year. And I, I, uh, I think that is, that is great news because it means that the whole of Europe is looking to Norway right now and say, um, uh, how far can you go with standardization? Uh, what will you achieve with having one data center, having one interlocking system and being able to rebuild all the trains with the same equipment? Uh, so indeed, as you say, we are trying to, to, to set a new standard for signaling in, in Europe. Fantastic. And Lars, from your point of view? Yeah, actually, as I said, this is the first time that a country will standardize and digitize its entire railway system. 
So far, this has only happened on individual sections, respectively lines. Uh, so this has been a trial project in, in Germany, uh, where they actually go for one line then. But many countries with comparable route networks are looking at Norway with great interest. So there have been a lot of visitors here. So Finland is planning the same nationwide solution as Norway, but will not start until 2028. That is my information. So all the countries in Europe, such as Denmark, Sweden, Germany and Austria are building regional digital signaling system and not a single system for the whole country. So. We can imagine that this project can become a blueprint for the digitization of railway in general. So, so let's see. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I can say all the indicators are really, really positive and you know, investment on this scale is really rare too. So absolutely, I think changing the game in rail, I think is a really good way to describe that. Um, and if we also just think about what's happened over the last couple of years in, in order to get to this point, you know, continuity of operations is massively, massively important. And I've heard about the implementation of parallel testing being super important, you know, remote functions, for example, to keep the project going, for example, during the pandemic. And you built up two tests testing centers, I understand, one in Norway and one in Germany. Can you tell me a bit more about that and the experience of that so far? Um, perhaps Lars first. Yeah, I must say the testing center is in operation since October 2019. Mm. So it has been running for quite a while now. And of course, it contains the central interlocking system, ETCS, uh, and all the system components. The interlocking system and the ETCS technology will be truly tested in simu and simulated in these test centers. So, of course, that will reduce the need for testing on site, where we have the operation ongoing, as you heard. So this is a huge benefit to do a lot of testing in our test centers. And for sure, we have had the pandemic and um, with these two test centers, we have managed to actually yeah, continue the testing, sitting from home office, uh, both in Germany and Norway, and do this testing together with Bananur and the other suppliers. So um, it's a huge benefit for us. Absolutely. And that partnership again coming to the fore. Absolutely. Sver, what was this like for you? How did it benefit your operations? Yeah. You of course, what we, what we aim for is basically a digital twin. So I should say that my, my dream, my vision is to be able to have a digital twin that we, can, um, that we can test and see the effect before we go out in the field at all. So it is really a game changer what we see today and what we do because we are able to test, we're able to see how things work together before we go out in the field. And that saves money. It saves on, on what is really important for us. It saves on the time that we need to to, to take away operations. Mm. So it's a, it, it is a game changer, uh, nothing less than that. Fantastic, thank you. And can you tell me a little bit more, Lars, about the outdoor systems and also the real life um, railroad lines as well? I'd love to bring that to life. Yeah, uh, of course, it starts with, uh, with data and uh, actually with, with to know what we are going into then. So the project team simulates those digitally using BIM. BIM technology. So in other words, with digital twin, we first scan the railway infrastructure using cameras. It's uh, some leader cameras uh, installed on a locomotive. We will run over the, all the lines and then we measure where the points are, where the objects are placed. And then we use this technology in the, the BIM system. So. So then we create a digital rail layout that we import into our engineering tools. So in the second and last testing phase, the team tests the technologies entirely directly on the line side equipment or at the individual stations. So in the final stage, we test that our measures are correct and um, then we are ready to go. Superb. And about the role of the testing center in all of this as well. So in terms of like the next stage and further development of the project, how important is that for, for you, Sve? 
Oh, it is key. And um, what we need is, of course, both the digital twin that we just mentioned, but we also need, of course, to go out in the field and do the test. So we have a, a, a test line where we are able to see that uh, what, we, uh, what we saw on the digital twin actually works out in the field. So you can't have uh, only one of them, you need to have the combination. And this also going forward is, 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 is key. But we want to have building blocks, we want to simulate the effect and be able to test effects without going out in the real line. But we need, of course, when we have seen something that we, that we like on the digital side, we need also to be able to test it real life out on the, on the pilot. Line. Absolutely. And, and Lars, from your take, how, how important is the testing centre for you? Well, the, the testing centre is really important for us. As I said here, we, we have the possibility to test functions, to test that things are working. And of course, we simulate the interlocking and do all these things. And then we can actually yeah, modify and find errors, find um, things we struggle with without uh, disturbing the operation. So, and of course, to sit then with a team in Braunschweig, with a team here in Norway, and we communicate and we share the data uh, in true time, that is um, a real benefit for us and uh, gives uh, a, a true benefit. Well, Absolutely. No, I love that in terms of the different testing of the, all the elements you've described there, that focus on collaboration, education. And I heard about the establishment of Campus Nyland as well, supporting that further too. So fantastic kind of range of activities there. That's brilliant. And as we kind of move towards the, the end of our episode here, I want to throw in a final question, if I may. So just reflecting on all the things we've talked about today, it's really clear to me that the world is looking, you know, they're looking at what you're doing. They're looking at the power of this partnership. And if you could share, say, one takeaway, the more we've discussed today and the work that you've done that would help them take forward their initiatives at the moment and help advance rail globally, what would that be? And um, Perhaps to last first. I must say, yeah, so the, the partnership and, and, and uh, to, to actually work here together with, with four parties, um, so, yeah, three of us suppliers and, of, of course, Balnanur, we also have quite a lot of responsibility into the deliveries. So it's uh, openness, it's uh, one team, common goals to, to, to actually reach together and... Um, here we win together or lose together. So that is um, a common message for me. So, yeah. I love that. That's a, that's a great statement, a real, real ethos uh, of sharing and togetherness there. I love that. And it's fair if I could give your final takeaway. Yeah, we uh, we win together. So I'm, I'm more the guy who likes to, <laughs> to win together. Um, <clears throat> but, but seriously, the... Um, I think Lars touched upon it, um, and, and you also brought up uh, Campus Nyland. The fact that we bring together Siemens, Alstom, Thales, and ourselves, that we set a very ambitious target, but we are clear on those targets and we stick to our targets, um, uh, has been, I think, a major, major, major issue for the whole project in terms of moving us forward in, in a good way. So, um, so yeah, uh, choose your partners and uh, stick to your partners and stick to your goals. Fantastic. I love that. I'll, I'll throw in a quick takeaway as well. and I'll go for three P's. So partnership, we've already mentioned it. Shared purpose would be my second P. Mm -hmm. And passion, frankly, that's come through from this conversation as well for REL. That's really a you know, driving force for this innovation that I'm seeing. And it's really clear to me that the future of REL really is being developed in Norway. And it's being supported by all those different elements we've talked about today around the re-signaling, around digitalization, all the benefits that's going to bring from reducing complexity, improving standardization etc and the important role of testing and also education support and reskilling too so i i uh, i'm going to throw in a little a little phrase as well i would say the future is bright and the future is rel and it's all start, you know, really starting here so congratulations to both of you long may this partnership flourish and thank you both for joining me here today Sver and lars it's been an absolute pleasure thank you sally thank you very much thank you sally well my pleasure and thank you all for listening and watching us today and look out for another new episode of our moving beyond podcast coming very soon thank you